Came on. What's it called? Gas, Gas lamp. lamp. Gas lamp. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Oh, that's red. It's lovely, isn't it? I can smell the fruit from here. It's nice. This is Brothers Wild Fruit. It's a very obvious dish on the camera. It's uh, English cider. It's obviously, it's um, kind of berry flavoured, I suppose, you would say. I hope so. Bursting that kind berries. of colour. Cider from Free Spirits. <laughs> From Chef de Mallet, my neck of the woods. So Chef de Mallet, the name of that. But are you a free spirit? Yeah. I've got two drinks. I'll show the camera. Two two drinks. And they're two both half very, half very, half very strong. Very, very strong. Very, very strong. This first one is called, and that's why I don't like cricket. That's from a song, isn't it? I know. Yeah. I love cricket. Yeah. But, so if you, like if you don't like cricket, cricket this won't mean anything to you, but uh, we're in Manchester and England have just lost the Ashes. They yeah, have just lost the Ashes. Yesterday, they lost the Ashes. Um, they lost them in Manchester. So Fourth test. It was quite a sad day for English cricket, but we won the World Cup. But it's a cricket flip, cricket name drink, and this is six... No, this one is 5.3%. The other one is 8.3%. But we'll get them to that one in a minute. This one's 53 which is still quite strong for an, yeah, for an ale. Yeah, it's not a session ale, is it? It's double dry hopped, which I now know what that means. And it's, I mean, I, when I say fruity, it's not compared to what you've got. Not like there's light bean, right? No, there's a little bit of, little bit of floral fruits in there. A little bit of wood. Nice. A little bit of wood. Yeah, I'm not. You can tell I'm not that, no, you're making it up. Aren't you? No, that's what it smells like to you're me. Just looking around. That's what it smells like to me. Okay. But if you've got an expert, they probably say something different. Mine tastes like raspberries, Jeff. Good. We're all happy then. Yeah. So yeah, we're in Manchester, and it took us a while to get set up, but we found a lovely little subterranean drinking den. What's that? What is that? It's, yeah, subterranean. It's labelled as craft beer. I'm going to take take a shot of the bar because I, I like the look of the bar um, for our there's lots of um, patron viewers wood. it's quite all tiled so there's lots of tiles on the walls if you're on the video you can see behind us um, it's kind of a lot of wood a couple of fireplaces in here but kind of a converted cellar I suppose you'd say wouldn't it uh, have you ever seen the film Texas Chainsaw Massacre nope okay so um, imagine that well I can't I haven't okay. seen it well, I'm sure our viewers that might have seen it. But it's, uh, it's my kind of bar. I like this kind of bar. It's good. So, um, we should toast our newest patron. We have a new one. Yeah, Gareth. 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 Cheers, Cheers Gareth. Gareth. Thank you for the drink. Thank you very much. I'm proudly wearing my Agile Podcast t-shirt. Yes. Patrons. Around town. Getting lots of looks. So, yes. Really, but... Um, see if you're a patron. Have they had their t-shirts yet? Yes, yeah, I checked. Yeah, they've got them. Good. Yeah, we haven't seen many t-shirts, photos yet. No. But so maybe we will. Tweet them in, but thank you for um, contributing and um, we hope you're enjoying your gifts. There's a new new tier, new $2 tier. Okay. Next to the peanuts. No. It should be the peanuts. Obviously. It should Because you get a bag of peanuts. And... Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to support, not really interested in all the, the guffaw, of a t-shirt and signed photograph and Christmas single and all that jazz. You just want to support what we do, two dollars. Get on to patreon.com slash the agile podcast. But anyway, enough of that. What are we doing? Welcome back from the, your summer break. You've been off for a while. I have. I've had a very nice relaxing August with very little work being done, very little... You completely switched off, didn't you? I did. I, I, you just didn't respond to me. Was that just me, or...? <laughs> no, you know, just me, yeah. no I, I cut myself off from social media. I cut myself largely off from my emails um, and just enjoyed the quiet life in France for three weeks. Whereas I just and cut myself off. Yeah. Jeff's hurt his finger. <laughs> um, but no, I, it was... It was and refreshing. How was France? Lovely. Very impressed. It's expensive, I think. Yeah. By well, everywhere is expensive now because <laughs> of Brexit. Yeah, true. Let's not get into that. But 
by comparison, our last holiday was in Sicily, in Italy. And just the France. As soon as you, again, the coast was a lot more expensive than the Dordogne. And Au naturel. Yeah, so. It was, but it was nice. It was warm, and it got warmer just, just by the time we were leaving. It's 35 degrees. Yeah. Which is warm. So I feel, talking of heat, I feel like season just ended very very oh, yeah, abruptly. Now it's freezing. It went from summer to it, when I woke up yesterday. Yeah. It was 5 degrees. Yeah, as soon as September started, everything it seems like happy season's finished now. It's like but I, I, I'm sure last year we had a nice warm September. September it was sort of a gradual merge into winter. I was reading, I think it was because I was following the cricket this weekend. I think statistically, I, I can always struggle with statistically, mm. but that. Well, um, one out of ten every day, one out of ten people do. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but September in the UK is um, drier on record than August. I really? Think. Yeah, in terms of rainfall. Mm. For like the last few years. Well, not today. Oh, it's very, very wet today. very bleak out there today. I have to buy an umbrella. I mean, they do say it rains much more up here, but... We're allowed to say it's up north. Well, it is for us. John, John McNestry, who was, um, took umbrage to that, to that statement, didn't he? The, yeah. Uh, easy, to easy to wind up. <laughs> easy, easy to wind up. So, yes, yeah, so apparently, according to John McNestry, Manchester isn't up north. <coughs> Guess it's all relative, isn't it? Yeah. If you're on the North Pole, everywhere south. There's so, a bit of fact for you. What are we talking about today? I don't really know. Um, I did. Oh, we had some. I'll find I'll find some because we had some people who said this should be on. Well, they said this should be on your podcast, and I, I, I saved them to my phone. Podcast ideas that I got that album. Oh, okay. Graham said I like the last podcast about cynicism. It was really interesting. Another interesting personality trait for me is how people like to be in charge. But as Agile promotes a flat structure, I'm sure this is something a lot of Scrum Masters have to deal with in others, or even within themselves. I wonder what it is that draws people to want to take control and be in charge. It could be Scrum Masters, product owners, team members, or outside influences such as line managers. What do you think about that? We actually we were talking about that today a little bit, weren't we? Control. With regards to my daughter. Oh, no, we weren't, but that, 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 that's a good case study if you wanted to bring my her into like, it. My daughter, at the age of 10, likes to be in charge. Um, I don't know what, why it is. Well, I did, a, I did a talk a few years ago based on a book. It was the needs of children, the yeah. fundamental needs of children, uh, and one of them is independence. So in order for a child to grow, yeah. they need independence, they need to be encouraged to, to take their independence. And so that is a form of being in charge, yeah. being in charge of yourself. Yeah, 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 and taking control from others. So you imagine a, a, an infant grows up completely dependent, Yeah. Uh, uh, unlike other animals that are born and walk within hours yes. babies are yes. on their mothers yeah. like they are they are they are a drain yeah <laughs> he's speaking from experience um, what's the word I'm looking for begins with S anyway it doesn't matter um, so, but yeah so they're completely dependent and then eventually they, they, they take more independence uh, and they take more control from, from their parents and their surroundings and they're constantly pushing the boundaries aren't they testing where can I get more and I mapped that to the development of a team because yeah. in most organisations teams are very dependent their put work is pushed to them they're, yeah. they're controlled their constraints are defined perhaps even team memberships defined but over time they can become more independent it's not like a binary light switch is turned on um, but that, that need for being in charge, that's something that we come across because historically that's how managers, that's how a lot of people have, have defined value in themselves. And, yeah. But organisationally that has been, you, know, you are in charge, that's, how, that's why you're paid the big bucks. And it's why you're rewarded. Where you, if you want to get anywhere in life, you've got to take control of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Take um, yeah. recognition when it's, you know, yeah, but I think it's um, maybe something to do with well, about the absence of decision making. We were talking about this today in our advance class. Yeah, but the idea because people find uncertainty so uncomfortable, even people, especially maybe even more so, people who are in charge or, or feel the need to take charge of situations, cannot cope with the 
the anxiety of no one taking charge so they feel because we notice that even even the simple games like the board board game that we mm. play where you put you create a game uh, where no one is in charge yet usually in larger groups I wonder if there's a social science element to this that the larger the group the more people feel the more potential anxiety and uncertainty so people feel more likely to take charge or whether it's just more personalities to choose from in that in a larger sample size you're more mm, I suppose you're more likely for the more likely candidates to to come to the fore but we've had situations before where generally the first volunteer is actually the worst of the exercise oh yes yeah 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 definitely and so we, me and Jeff have done um, in advanced classes gone by that we've since changed but I can remember certain scenarios where we asked the volunteers to demonstrate a behaviour but they think they can do it but they actually do a worse job yeah. than someone who sits back and waits for their moment yeah yeah and there's that's, that's sort of a little bit done in Cougar in a way you just don't realise how how incompetent you are at certain things but you know because you've been shielded from it and well, um, you just don't take that kind of feedback you ignore all the indications yeah but where, where did this start this start, this start back in shop so I think there is an element of a basic human need to have control over your destiny yeah and I, I think if you're lacking so we have a number of needs I think humans have needs certain needs and if you don't have them fulfilled in one part of your life then you'll try and find them in another part of your life. Mm. So if you feel out of control at work, mm. then you'll try and find something outside of work that will allow you to have control. You think? It, I, I, this, is a, this is a hypothesis. Okay. Um, I mean, the human givens would, 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 I think, go along with that. So there's the fear of, well, am I adding value? Mm. Uh, if, I, if I'm not in charge, am I adding value? If I, if I don't have control, there's possibly trust. Do I trust other people to do a good job? Mm. You know, um, my wife does listen to these podcasts, so I should be careful. But there's, and I, I would agree with her. There is an element of uh, there's a lot of jobs that if I did them, they would not be as good as if she did them. And she knows that, and I know that. And so there's an element of, well, is there really any point in me doing that? Because you're just going to stress that I'm going to do it wrong, and then you're going to come back and do it right when I've done it wrong. Um, so that, yeah. There's, so there's fear of that. There's fear of that. There's, am I getting, the, am I getting this need met in anywhere else in my life? If not, I'm going to hang on to it at work. Um, but then there's also, I suppose, there's an element of self-preservation. That if if that's not no longer my job, do I have a job? How am I going to pay the bills? It's also, I think, a lot of, a lot of it is what and what makes you what you get a kick out of. Hmm. Also, I think some people do actually get a a buzz from the. I mean, if it goes well, if it goes right, and you get a lot of kudos for True. it. A lot of respect for it. Yeah. Um, which in some organisations, leaders, um, controllers, people in charge are, you know, worshipped. Yeah. To, 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 even by people who follow them. But there's a following culture. Um, those people will largely get rewarded for it and maybe even personally get a kick out. We do kind of deify action heroes they don't mean our culture mm. and so you know the doers the, the people who grab life by the scruff of the neck get the headlines um, and culturally if you do that I think there's also an element of rescuing as well for the people pleasers if you see people floundering and you can come in and take charge and solve it for them yeah I think that that plays to your plays to your ego a little bit we have a situation on holiday, so I, I become very crabby, we've talked about this before, I get crabby when I'm hungry and we talk about hangry being hungry. Yeah. So I don't know, it was also, my kids play a huge part in this as well, so we were, I'll give you the scenario, we're, the night before we, we get the ferry back from France, mm. 
uh, we start we stopped we've got an overnight stay in a small town called Samalo which is the ferry port basically back to Portsmouth yeah. and we've got uh, we've got to go find a restaurant we've got to find something to eat it's, it's, we've been driving all day we I've been driving You've all been day, driving all day. Um, we checked into the hotel we go out and we park the car we are walking to try and find somewhere to eat yeah right. um, and nobody I don't expect my kids to decide where to be <laughs> so between me and my wife yeah nobody's making a decision so I make a decision yeah which then turns out to be the, the wrong, wrong decision yeah so my and this is this tells us a lot about me my default response to that was well okay then I'm not deciding anymore it's over, yeah. to, you. It's over to you now nothing yeah. to do with me if it's the wrong choice next time it wasn't my fault it's still yeah. about you so that tells you probably something more about me but the, the thing that frustrated me what probably put me in charge in the first place was a lack of decision making yeah so no one you else fill the gap yeah so it just feels like well someone's and I think maybe the the status thing within my family takes over a bit there my kids are hungry yeah so I feel I have to be able to put food in my kids yeah yeah so maybe that's an element of it but my when challenged on it and when questioned on my decision mm. my default response was which probably tells me something about myself thinking maybe I'm not comfortable with that role I'm, I'm very rather than stand by my decision I was willing just to say well you know you can do it next time yeah yeah so maybe some people are more accustomed to it than me well I've got a friend we'll call him let's call him Matt because that's his name <laughs> um, and he's renowned within our friendship group for I don't mind never make a decision doesn't like to be in charge no no but he has to make a lot of important decisions on a daily basis at work oh uh, okay so um, yeah he has is a a, a tough job with lots of responsibility and I think that uses up all of his decision making mm. oh I can see that energy you, you want to be a, a respite he, yeah he just wants alright just and go with the flow we were talking, I was talking about this with my wife the other day but you know I went out for a drink with him I said where are you going I said well Matt I won't decide uh, so I'll have to pick somewhere and she said why does he do that and we were talking about it and I said well there's that there's the fact that he has to make so many decisions at work but also he's pretty confident of we've known each other for yeah, 30 years that it's rare that I would make a terrible decision mm. and any of our other friends would make a terrible decision so he's pretty comfortable with whatever happens yeah and he's also someone that will make the best of it yeah so he's not someone who would he would ever he'd, he'd, say that's the wrong decision he'd yeah. never pull you up on it that's yeah. a terrible decision yeah so I feel safe doing that yeah the same happened for me this weekend so I have for the for the benefit of people listening I have been at the Ashes this weekend so I had tickets for the cricket on um, so it's your the fault so um, a few of my friends were meeting up so I went to watch the World Cup and we won that <laughs> but we were meeting up in Manchester after the game and on the yeah. first night so we had the, the very the very this is exactly what you described so we meet in a bar and someone says where are we going to go and then someone else says, oh, I don't know. And then everyone is quickly, no, I don't, know. I don't, I don't mind, I'll yeah. go wherever. So then there's that murmur of, well, nothing happens, we're just going to end up staying here. Mm. Maybe that's the right thing to do. Maybe. maybe. Maybe staying there is the right thing, that pub is the right thing to do. But for me, a lack of decision making is what probably puts me in, in, in that yeah. front seat. Have you ever read The Dice Man? No. I'm going, to, I'm going to have to Google this. I'm pretty sure its name's Reinhardt. I'm going to say Luke Reinhardt. Google this. Luke Reinhardt. His name checks out on Amazon. The Dice Man. There we go. 20 years old. Yeah. 20 years old, that book. Yeah, so I read it a long time ago. And as I remember it, the, sy- the synopsis is a guy decides to leave all of life's decisions to the roll of a dice. Oh, really? So instead of making a decision, he would list six options and he would roll a dice. Yeah. That would go from, do I cheat on my wife? 
to, well, I think he included going to Vegas, do I put the money on red, black, whatever. Oh, really? He would, he would um, set something and roll the dice, and he would just go with whatever it came up with. And, and I can't remember how it turned out, but there was, there's a sequel, so he didn't die. Um, <laughs> the, um, the, we, we, we toyed with that idea in our friendship group. Of, because you know, Matt would never make a decision should we just roll the dice yeah. and he'd be fine with that um, and you are made, even then you are still making a decision of sorts because you're choosing the six options <laughs> yeah but there, that that's almost all right, it's, it's, it, no it's not it's nowhere near set based decision making but it is experimentation it, mm. it's it's opening up options rather than just following your defaults mm. and it's at least broadening your cognitive biases mm. um, and I think we've talked about this before in that given the choice of the same or different I will choose different Given the choice of the same or different, my wife would choose the same. Right. And so we're quite different. We're quite different in that regard. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think choosing different is the outlier. Do you? I think more people. Yeah. Because we don't like change. Stick with the same. Yeah. If, it, if it's working, stick with it. Even yeah. if it's not really working, but it's probably better. But the unknown is more scary. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas to me, the known is scary. I think you're in the minority there. But um, I was going to so again, it was a resonance with the whole improv side of things for me as well. The whole high status, low status, um, accepting an offer that someone else suggests, yeah. or blocking off because you want to control the situation. And Keith Johnson always said, I think I've asked you this question before, a long time ago, probably not even on the podcast, but Keith Johnson, who's... Your hero. One of my my many heroes, suggested that we all have a default. Yeah. We all have a default. We all have a tendency. And he, he would suggest even if you walk down the street and whether you tend to, if you will stick to the inside wall to stay away from the traffic, Mm -hmm. Or you will happily give, willingly walk in the road to let someone else walk past. Mm. Is a an instinctive response that we have. It's not something we can control. It's just built in our DNA. Whether we will naturally follow a decision maker, or we will be the decision maker ourselves okay. and control the situation. You think that's inbuilt from birth? Yeah. Okay. That's what he would say. What do you think? I, I think. I, I can only compare it to me because I only know me I can't say for other people but I don't think I've ever changed I think I have I, think I, have tend, to, I would sell, I tend to be a low status I prefer I'll, I will happily go with an idea if someone else suggests it but I, I get very frustrated with a lack of decision making as I've constantly said in this podcast I just think I'm weird <laughs> well well because and I, we've, I've reflected on this a lot in the past about how I don't know whether I actually have an identity because I will just fill the gap so if the team needs the decision maker I'll step up and make decisions if the team needs someone to just shut up and follow I'll be that person if the team needs someone to argue I'll argue and that that doesn't even have to be a team I'm but you're happy to be different. Well, I think that's yeah. I I think I'm fluid, that, and that it bothered me for a while mm. because it, it was a thing. Well, who am I? Mm. You know. But then I became comfortable with it. There was an element of you know if you do these um, what do you call it psychometric tests um, and sort of yeah you know, leaderships questionnaires and things. Yeah. I would always come out pretty level. Oh. I wouldn't really have a box to fit in. I'd be just on the borderline. And even I don't. I really don't believe in this. But my star sign. Right? No, from a from a young age, when used to like my sister used to read the star signs and things. I was depending on which newspaper you got. I was a different star sign because my birthday is sort of on the cusp. It's twentieth. It's the twenty third. And so sometimes I'd be a Cancer. Sometimes I'd be a Leo. Um, I, I don't believe in star sign nonsense but there's that aspect to my life story so you think you do morph into what 
feel the copy of this, but you you feel there's, there's a word for that, isn't it? I do the opposite of copy, I think. I think I find the gap and I try and fill it. But who recognises that gap? Me, I think. How do you know it's a gap? I don't. I, I don't know. I think it's... You might, uh, you might be filling a gap that it's isn't needed. Quite it's, possibly. It needs to be there. Yeah, and I think it, there's an element... This is going weird. I, I don't really like where this is going. But I think it's there's an it's element... A strong, it's very strong stuff, Jeff. Uh, I need, uh, yeah, we need to introduce this one in a minute. But, <laughs> um, I think there's an element that... This is now just going weird. <laughs> You're uncomfortable now, aren't you? I am. It's a bit weird because it's... To me, it's an, almost an element of balance. I don't like there being an out of balance... Thing. So if you've got too many of one, yeah. then I would, and I, you know, I always you go for the underdog. It. I always try and balance somehow. Never that's, really a thought need, that that's a need for kind of constant, equality, fairness. Yeah, fairness. You believe in fairness. Oh, no, that's not a bad thing. But maybe fairness isn't the answer. When you say maybe I'm filling a hole that isn't there. Yeah, well, well, maybe, needs maybe, there. Needs, maybe that hole needs to be there. Maybe there needs to be unbalanced. Yeah. Or imbalance. Imbalance? Yeah. Imbalance. Anyway, on to wow. my second half point. Wow. Yeah. No, we really didn't, didn't link that to Agile very much. My second half point, what's it called? What's it called? It's got a weird name, isn't it? Oh, it's the, 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 the black, the, the big dip, dipper. Dipper. Yeah. The, 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 it's got two words. It's got a magpie. It's, it's a weird, so this is a collaboration of three different breweries. So I think they've all just got their off cuts, <laughs> stuck it in a barrel, the mixed dregs, it around a bit. The of the barrel. Thought, Jesus, that's that's quite strong, eight point three percent. And it's one of those where you smell it. It smells strong. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't intentional. Yeah. So that's eight point three. That's it smells sweet. fruity, isn't it? It smells quite grapefruity, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Sour. It smells sour. I like sour. We were having a conversation about that earlier on. I quite like a grapefruit. But, um, that's for. A, for an ale, that's very strong. Is that yeah, why it's served in a small glass? No, I asked for a small glass. I wasn't going to have a pint of it. Um, yeah, that's... How would you describe that? I'm going to have another sip. My Ribena side is going mm. down very nicely, by the way. Mine's only 4%. A bit, a bit sweaty. Ugh. You're not selling that. Okay. What the taste of it? Well, I, I haven't ever drunk a cup of sweat. Well, let's hope not. Well, I, I've had a can of sweat when I was in Hong Kong. I, I was like, in a fishing village with Matt. In fact, um, let's call him Matt. Yeah, and we were very, very, very hot. We were very sweaty, and we found. We, I think we found a vending machine or something, um, and the only can of drink it, there was, it was in it it was called sweat it wasn't actual sweat no it was, that's what it was called oh dear anyway yeah what's, what's it like it's, it's, it's by now it's warm so I ordered this nearly an hour ago right? <laughs> after we set up we changed the table a few times back to being in charge so I, I mentioned right, my, sorry, daughter, yeah. my daughter at the beginning and I, w- I was wondering this the other day because we've obviously I've got two kids and at some point when they're older, maybe they'll find this online somewhere and hear and listen to this stuff. It's, quite, it's quite interesting because my my son, I think it it polarizes that relationship. So my my daughter is very controlling. She likes to so if there's a group of friends, two people will suggest it. We should do this now. We're, we're going to play this game. You're going to be the wizard and you're going to be the princess, and she'll be setting the whole thing up. And my son, whether it's nature or nurture, I don't know. Whether this is the thing about it being part of your DNA, part yeah. from birth, is that, or maybe it's just the environment that he's been around. He has always been the, the character in that game, her, in her game. Yeah. And even now, he plays that role of being the follower to her suggestion. I would say that's nurture. More than nature. Yeah, and I'm, the analogy that I've got in my head, metaphor, if you like, is you know, Jocelyn is, is an oak tree that's established, and you've got another tree that is, is starting to grow in its shadow. Yeah. And there isn't as much sunlight, so it's always going to be weaker, it's always going to be, unless you, you took it out and put it into a different environment where it would flourish and it, it would grow. Um, but that's not to say that tree can't be a fantastic tree. But the environment is shaping it in 
a certain way mm. and it, that, that tree cannot affect that environment right now mm. um, that's what that's the analogy that comes to mind for me okay and I would say that that that's very relevant to agile teams because whether you're a leader whether you have formal leadership or informal leadership you know, authority or influence mm. you are potentially casting a shadow of course you are or giving space but all those like to take that analogy even further those big trees need pruning don't they they do and whether you could pollarding is cool. that was cool but I recognise I think if you're aware of it you would try and either do that pruning yourself or maybe you'd be pruning the team to allow other people others to flourish as a leader yeah yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. So the question was originally, do we think people always fill that void, that gap of being in charge? Well, I think the question was something like, is it, is it, is it normal, is it natural, or something like that? It says, people like to be in charge. What is it that draws people to want to take control and be in charge? I think we've covered that. Mm. Um, but it's something that scrum. The other part of that was it's something that scrum masters have to deal with. So how do you deal with it? Well, they, from a needs perspective, if they, what is it that being in charge gives them? I think if, if we can understand the drivers and what they're hoping to achieve from that, and then maybe we can help them find different ways of achieving that that's more supportive of that might not get in the way of a team growing. Team growth, yeah. And the organisational downside to that brings you. Because you can't, there's nothing to stop you coaching people outside of the work environment as just being a good ooh, colleague. Ooh, ooh, there was Michelle Sliger, you know Michelle, don't you? Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure she created a website for project managers who had seen the light. I, I can't remember the phrase she used, but it was, uh, I used to be a command and control manager. Mm. Suddenly, a light bulb went off for me, and this was like my light bulb moment. And I you know, changed how I worked, and I started being a servant leader. Yeah. And so she gathered people's stories, yeah. curated them, if you like, onto this website. And I, it was, it was I, I quite enjoyed reading them. Was, and that, I think that would be a good place to look at you know, their common patterns mm. that help people think you know what yes I can see now how I can still be fulfilled I can still add value by being a different type of leader good stuff That's well that was for Graham a good question Another for Graham patrons. Graham McMahon 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 mm-hmm. thank you Graham well patrons get their questions answered, questions answered they seem to they seem to Manchester's a pleasant change from London, isn't it? Yeah, we might try and um, do another one. It's a podcast. We might probably. go up north, maybe. <laughs> we will go up north one day. All right. Well, it's late. It's time to go. Cheers. Ta-da. Cheers, everyone.